welcome to episode 36 of the Paper Crane Yarns Knitting Podcast. My name is Ashley and I am a yarn dyer and yarn store owner located in central Alabama, USA. And that's where I'm coming to you today from is my yarn store. It is a Friday evening at the end of March and I've closed for the day. So I thought I would just take a little bit of time to catch you guys up on the projects I've been working on. And there are definitely quite a few. So um, you're in for some knitting today, some cross stitch, crochet, and quilting. I have a ton of projects. Um, I also have a little bit of admin to say here in the very beginning. So I'm going to say that part and then you can skip it if you want to and move on just to the projects if that's what you're here for. But if you're interested in a couple of um, like updates with my business, then I'm going to say that part first. But let me also say that you can find all of the details for what I talk about today in the description box below. So if you are looking for a link to a pattern, I'll have that linked below. Um, whatever, whatever information I can think of will be available. But of course, if you need to reach out um, about anything specific, if you have a question, feel free to do that and I will do my best to get back to you. So the other update I have is that this coming month um, at the end of April, like the third weekend in April, we will be returning as vendors at the Great Smoky Mountain Fiber Fair in Townsend, Tennessee. This will be my third year vending at the Smoky Mountain Fiber Fair. Um, I've met quite a few of you who watch this through that fair. So I'm excited to return and see some familiar faces. If you're gonna be there, leave me a comment below and let me know so I know to look for you. Yeah, I'm super excited to go again. Um, I hope that we never have to miss this one because I really love it. It's in the most beautiful area, truly. And it's very quaint, but there's amazing vendors there. Um, so I'm just really looking forward to it. But of course, that said, uh, just keep in mind that my storefront will be closed during that time. The actual dates that I'll be closed are on my website and I'll have those written below as well. But it's like the weekend of the of April 20th, um, plus a few days leading up to it, I'll be closed because we'll be packing and preparing. So I just want you to know because my online shop will be closed for orders until we get back and the and my storefront will be closed. So anyway, just want you to know that. Um, and that's it for the like store admin. Uh, the other exciting thing that I have to talk about are two upcoming make alongs that I have. So the first one is, you may have seen this on my Instagram if you if you follow me there, um, but I have a stitch along coming up with uh, my friend Sarah who has the floss tube channel Handmade by Sarah W. She's a doll, she's so sweet. Um, I'm excited that we're gonna do this together. So I, as you may know, am a new cross stitcher. I just picked up the craft very, very recently and I've definitely fallen head over heels for it. Um, so I'm going to be carrying cross stitch supplies in the shop at here at Paper Crane Yarns. Um, I have a lot of those things just waiting to go out. They're still sitting kind of in a bag. But my friend Sarah, she actually lives here in the same town as I do. And, and she happened to pick up knitting at the same time that I picked up cross stitch. It was very serendipitous. We didn't know each other beforehand. It just worked out that way. So um, I'm really excited to get to host a stitch along with her. And so the chart that we're going to be stitching is called the, uh, it's called Botanical Study Number One by Barbie Tingley of Petal Pusher. And I came across this chart when I was at the Nashville Needlework Market this year. So I did get to attend um, Market as it's colloquially known on Floss Tube. And I got to bring home lots of beautiful charts um, this was one that I spotted. So they, everybody had samples stitched up of everything that they were selling. And this, I was, it was like near the end of the day for me. I had spent my money. I was getting ready to go. And across the, it was like across the whole hotel, um, I saw this in the window um, from Pedal Pusher. And so my sister-in-law, who she went to market with me, we we booked it over to that booth and I, I knew I had to get this chart. So I felt like it had this connection with me. It was something about just this beautiful design stitched on this dark fabric. And then when Sarah came to my shop to see all the charts that I had brought home from market, she had almost the same kind of, she was drawn in by this one too. So 
that's the story of why we decided to do a stitch along together. And I look forward to hopefully many more in the future with her. Um, the start date for this will be April 13th. So it's, it's coming up. The hashtag is botanical study Sal. So I'll have that down below and on the screen. And um, at the time of recording this, we are approaching the last day of the pre-order that I have on my website for this chart. So I did go ahead and order the charts from the designer, but I, I ordered extra in case anybody sees this and decides they want to join or you know what have you. And if you end up not being able to get the chart from me, there's other places you can get it from. And if there's a huge demand, I'll place another order. But um, so I do have some extras and those are available on my website. I'll talk more about my kit and everything that I have for the stitch along. Um, towards the end of the video because many of you are probably not here for the cross stitch So thank you for indulging me while I talked about that and then one more very exciting Make along that I have coming up is with my dear lovely precious friend Gabriella of Meriwether knitting here on YouTube and I'm sure that you are familiar with Gabriella's channel But if not you should go take a look over on her YouTube. I'll also have that linked um, so months ago I think during October when I was doing Vlogtober, I had a suggestion from a viewer that Gabriella and I host together a knit along for, I think it was for the Bifurca vest, which is a Teti Litsack pattern. And I reached out to Gabriella about perhaps doing that or collaborating on something else. And she had a great idea of doing just a more general botanical themed make along. So that's what we're going to do. We've been talking about this kind of slowly like planning it for the past few weeks and we've come up with a start date so may 1st will be our start date for the botanical make along and we're making it a make along because we want to encourage um, crafters of all kinds or maybe aspiring crafters like perhaps you want to try the botanical study cross stitch chart you, that would count for the make along and you could you know do a crossover for those things but Anyway, we want to encourage people of all crafts who are just kind of inspired by the theme that we've selected to join us. And this will be a year long make along. So there's plenty of time to, there's plenty of time to come up with projects and come up with your materials and find your inspiration. And if you want to make 20 different things, you can, if you just want to work very slowly on one amazing thing for you, then that's also wonderful. So basically the theme is just botanical um and again whatever that means to you so a couple of ideas would be say you want to knit you could knit a color work design um garment that has perhaps a botanical motif so you know something floral something that's got trees um something that has lace that's inspired by like like the amy sure oolong tank pattern would be a, a great one that's a lace work chart where the lace panels look like oolong tea leaves. So that's just kind of like the interpretation that we're going with for this. But another idea would be, say you want to try your hand at naturally dyeing, which Gabriella does beautifully, by the way. Um, you could, you if you wanted to try botanical dyeing of fabric or yarn, that would count for the make along. Um, yeah, you get the idea. If if it's botanically related, um, if you want to do quilt blocks that all have botanical themes and enter that, then you're more than welcome. I will be doing many different things. So cross stitch, knitting, I'll be doing a lot of different things for the make along. And then, so a couple of details that she and I are still kind of working out like officially are we will have some prizes. So I'm excited, I'll be supplying like hand dyed yarn and probably a project bag or something for prizes for the make along. I don't know if we're going to do like quarterly prizes since this is a year long or if we're going to maybe wait until the end. I'm kind of leaning towards quarterly prizes just to kind of keep everybody encouraged and you know, not that you need prizes, but it's fun. So I'll probably dye up a one of a kind uh, colorway that I can use as a giveaway on my end. Um, so I'm very excited about that. And I think we'll have a Discord group, which is also really lovely because that will be a nice sort of tailored community space where we can 
really go in depth with sharing our projects and you don't have to be like an Instagram user or, you know, you don't have to use Ravelry. And so we'll, we'll work out those details and get back to you on that. But um, yeah, I hope you're excited for the botanical make along because I sure am. I have lots of plans. I'm trying to narrow it down. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started with my projects at long last. Thank you for sticking that out. I try to usually get started with the projects right away because I'm sure that's what most people are here for, but those are just some very exciting things that we have coming up. So I wanted to be sure to share about them. Um, okay, let's start with my uh, knitting finished objects. So my first finished object that I will share is, is the beret that I'm wearing. This is called the Today Beret by Isabella Clark, who is 100 Acre Wool here on YouTube and on Instagram. This pattern is currently in test knitting, but it is the test knit has almost come to a close. Um, so I imagine this pattern will be out not too, it'll probably be out pretty soon, I imagine, next few weeks, I think. Um, it's a gorgeous pattern. And when she first started sharing about her design process over on her YouTube channel, I knew that I would knit this, you know, either when the pattern came out or hopefully do a test knit. And yeah, I was fortunate to be. Um, accepted for the test knit and I'm so glad I got to make it. So let's talk about it a little bit. Um, there are three sizes for this pattern. I chose to make the medium size, which I think is perfect. It's so precious and, and adorable. Um, so these are all my hand dyed yarns and I'll take it off in a moment and show you and talk to you about it. But just to talk a little bit about the knitting process, this is an, uh, a brioche, a single color brioche pattern. So I think this would be a fantastic first time brioche knitting pattern. Um, it's very simple, it's very small, it has a very large gauge. Um, so it's it's like high reward, you know? Um, and, you know, if you make a mistake, it's really not that much fabric and that much knitting to have to correct, um, especially if you do the small size. So yeah, it's a beautiful construction. There. Here is my beautiful version. I just love this design. Uh, love, I just love this design. Um, I love the way that all the decreases look. It kind of looks like a snowflake going around. Um, it has this really beautiful, I think we did Italian tubular cast on. <laughs> My brain is not braining right now. I've dyed so much yarn today. I'm very tired. Um, but that gives it like that nice rolled looking edge. Very pretty. It's actually quite simple once you kind of familiarize your hands with how to do it. Um, it's sort of like a German twisted cast on, but anyway, it has, it's like the perfect combination of structured and floppy because, you know, you want it to be structured and have that, that beret shape on your head, but you don't want it to be so stiff. And so I just think it's the perfect, the perfect fabric. It's just beautiful. Um, so the yarns that I used, again, are, are my yarns, paper crane yarns. And this is two yarns, but three strands um, held together. So there's one strand of Merino sport weight yarn, which is something that from like my very early days of dyeing yarn, it was um, something I experimented with. And then I ended up keeping it in my stash all this time because I think I snipped the yarn and so I couldn't sell it and I kept it. And the colorway was called Rose Tea. Um, I don't have it to show you, but I did show it in my last episode and it's sort of like a creamy base with a hint of brick red and pink and then some kind of charcoal variegation to it. And then for the silk mohair that I use, that is my wood fire clay colorway. That is like a constant rotation in my hand dyed uh, palette. So I almost always have that colorway available. So that one you, you, sh you could get from my website. And then if you wanted to get a similar look, because that's really doing the majority of the work here since the silk mohair is the yarn that you are that I held double stranded. So one strand of the merino sport weight and two strands of the silk mohair, and that was how I achieved gauge, which was similar to how she designed this. So I think she designed it using one strand of nuptin and two strands of silk mohair. But you can. This is a pattern that really encourages you to play with yarn combinations. There's many different ways you could achieve this gauge, which I think was 17 stitches. Per inch if I remember correctly um, but that's what worked for me and so you know you could perhaps do a DK weight yarn with 
of one strand of silk mohair and um, yeah, so you can play around with it. And at the end of the day, the actual size of this beret part, I feel like as long as you're generally happy with it, it's okay if, you know, it's a little bit off compared to what you're going with. And since there's three sizes uh, or going for, but since there's three sizes of the pattern, if you think your hat, if you think your gauge is a little bit loose, maybe go with the smallest pattern and, you know, those, those are just some ideas. Um, but I just, I'm so happy with it. I love the structure of it. It has this adorable pom-pom. So I, I used a little clover pom-pom maker to make this. My first time making a pom-pom. Actually, this was my first one. And I love this. But this one I thought was way too big for the hat. I had to run outside, so I lost my train of thought. But I was probably rambling anyway. Um, so all that to say, I ended up making a second smaller pom-pom. And I think it's just perfect. Um, so this did use less than a full skein for each of the yarns. So um, it weighs 82 grams total. I, sh I was a little bit silly and didn't weigh the yarns before I made the pom-pom. So I'm not sure exactly how much yarn went into the beret. But if you have at least 75% of a full skein of those yarns, if, if you do a similar pairing, you'll have enough for this. And again, this is the medium size of the pattern. So all in all, I really love this. Um, I'm just super happy that I got to make this and I do plan on making more. This was a very quick knit and I, I can imagine all the different color combinations that would look really pretty. Um, I'm definitely looking forward to having this rosy toned item in my wardrobe because that's a color that I think really flatters me with my skin tone and my hair color and my eyes. So yeah, I'm planning on doing more stuff in this color. And in fact, this is going to cover my microphone, so I won't talk, but I, when, when I get this on, you tell that I'm, I'm just really tired. Um, I, I'm looking forward to wearing this beret when it's cold again with this sh gigantic shawl because this is a kind of a similar warm rosy tone, but yeah. Oh, see, just to give a little idea. That's actually one of my favorite knits that is very precious to me. It's called the Powder Wrap by Casa Pinka. Um, so I look forward to wearing that with this hat. And I also have, you'll see later, but a work in progress that I think will be beautiful with this too. So I'm really trying to be mindful of wardrobe. And so I, I often find myself knitting things that are really fun, but that I maybe don't wanna wear as much. So something really bright and again, super fun, but not something that would be like an everyday wear for me. And at this point, I have quite a few handmade things, things that I've knitted. And I want to be, I still want to have fun with it, but I really want to be considerate of what I'm going to actually wear. Um, because I'm, I'm both a product and a process knitter, if you will. So I thoroughly crave and enjoy the process. Like, I want to knit every day, all day, and I would if I could. But I also am very motivated by the finished object. So I'm trying to be more considerate of that going forward. I'm going to change into my next finished object. So this is finished object number two. Um, I'm going to have to hold the microphone because this pullover is so lightweight that it's pulling down. So um, I'm going to hold the microphone. <laughs> but this is called Cloud Bow. It's a pattern by Reed Keys. And it well, it's available in Pom Pom Magazine issue number 40, I think. It, it was a spring edition. Um, again, at, as I've been saying these past few episodes, at the time of recording this, I'm not sure if this pattern is still available since Pom Pom went out of business. I actually bought that magazine when they announced that they were going out of business because it was my like one of my favorite knitwear collections to date. I want to make everything inside of that magazine. Um, so I went ahead and got the digital copy. And yeah, I've already knit up one of the designs. So the yarn for this project is my, uh, this is Treehouse Knits in the colorway Scranton What? <laughs> I have a hard time enunciating that without saying it like 
a turtle, um, Scranton what? <laughs> but it's a beautiful silk mohair. Um, and so the, the whole project, aside from like the collar and the neckline, are knit out of just one strand of the silk mohair on very large needles. So this whole project um, only took, I would say, one and a quarter skein of mohair. I haven't weighed the final thing, but this is definitely, this is at least half of a skein of mohair, um, surely more than that. So this was, this was <laughs> really nice. Um, I think if I was to make another one, I could get away with just one skein of hand dyed mohair. If I, this is the, the size three, if I did the size two and yeah, I think it would be plenty. So um, this is a really great, like low yardage, project even for the bigger sizes um this this yarn really goes a long way even though it's that lace weight yarn um because it's knit on such big needles and yeah i just let me stand up and show you this one <laughs> I always feel like when I put this one on, I have to like flap my wings because it's so billowy. There's so much, I mean, you can see my arm underneath. There's lots and lots of positive ease in this pattern all over the whole body. So I chose size three because I really wanted like a very ethereal, um, oversized version of the top. And that's exactly what I got. So I'm super happy with it. And uh, this is a peplum style top. So the construction is very interesting. Again, if you've been following along with me making this, then you've already heard me talk about it. But it's basically st you start with two rectangles of fabric and then you end up joining them together in an interesting way to get a little bit of like shoulder shaping and then you knit the sleeves so you knit both of the sleeve before you knit the rest of the body which is kind of nice because then once you finish the body you're all done so here you can kind of see where i picked up along the bottom of the rectangle for the peplum portion of the knitting and you can see on the sides where you pick up for the for the sleeves. Um, and so having those kinds of lines are very intentional, I think, from the designer to kind of give this a little bit of visual structure when there isn't a whole lot of physical structure. Just fun kind of garment. Um, I think it's going to look so beautiful over a variety of outfits, over dresses. And um, so far, actually, the outfit I'm wearing today is the only way in, in which I've worn it. It's got this really pretty silk skirt on that has daisies and um i wore this la last weekend with some pink platform heels <laughs> I i'll try to insert a photo so you can get an idea of like the full outfit but all i have to say is this pullover is exactly what i was hoping for and more um there was a time when i was getting a little bit irritated with knitting it i think because the very loose gauge was causing some hand pain for me i really do best with small needles and thin yarn or really just small needles anything above like a four millimeter starts to kind of teeter into the territory of uncomfortable for me um and i think this was a six millimeter so a us 10 or maybe even one size bigger than that but anyway i got it done <laughs> And actually, the finish was a little bit unexpected for me. So I, the last time I recorded, I had started on the peplum, but I only had a few inches in. And I was not motivated to work on it because it was quite a few stitches. Again, that that the needles that felt uncomfortable in my hands. But because it was all stockinette, I was just kind of, this was sort of my on-the-go project. So anytime that I had time to knit, but I didn't have like, the physical time or mental space to work on something a little bit more complicated. I just worked on this. And I remember one evening, it was like at the end of the day and I was spending time with my husband and my daughter and I was just working on this and I had this sudden thought, maybe I need to double check the pattern to figure out how long this is supposed to be. Cause I had a number in my head and I'm glad I checked because I was actually three or so inches off from the recommended length. And I knew I was just going to knit it to the recommended length. So then I measured my project and I was actually exactly at that length. So I, then I realized it was time to bind off. And that was a really nice surprise because at that point I was,
thinking this project will never end. <laughs> and all in all, the actual amount of knitting time that went into this was very minimal. It did not require a lot of time. It just felt very laborious because of all the things that I already mentioned. But um, I will make another one. So it was worth it. And I would love to do like a dark green one. I am going to be a maid of honor at my best friend's wedding at the end of the year. So it's going to be an outdoor wedding in November. And the dress that I have is like a spaghetti strap dress and I have nothing yet to go over it. So I was kind of thinking of doing like a color match with the yarn for afterwards at the reception. I might make one of these to sort of throw on um, because it's, it's a little bit fancy, but you know, it's, it'll be really pretty and I'm still thinking about my options, but that's my cloud bow, my other finished knitting object. If you have this in mind to knit it and if you're still able to get the pattern, you absolutely should. It is such a gorgeous piece. Um, like I said, it feels very ethereal and I could see this being really effective in a lot of different yarn choices. Uh, actually, another one of the yarns that I would like to make it in is my wood fire clay colorway, which was that silk mohair in my beret. I think that would be so stunning. Okay, let's move on to another project. Okay, so I'm back. <laughs> I'm really trying to get this microphone. To <laughs> it looks so strange, but um, it keeps rubbing against my shirt and my hair, and I know that that causes like a persistent background noise. So I'm trying to avoid it. Anyway, it looks a little strange, but I'm just hoping it doesn't make noise. The next finished object I have is a skein of hand spun. It looks a little bit scraggly the way that I skeined it up. So I'm sorry about that. Hopefully that doesn't bother you looking at it, but I will say this is a very beautiful yarn. It was a beautiful fiber. Um, so again, I know it looks a little bit like, like there's those little pigtails. Those are going to even out when I wind it up into a cake. Um, this is from a beautiful fiber braid that I got from Tammy of Cinematic Skeins a couple of months ago. She did like a little giveaway for some stuff from her stash and she, I happened to be drawn as the winner for this fiber, which was very exciting because I had just started spinning. So, um, it was great to like get some more fiber in my stash and it's something that I wouldn't have purchased. So, but I very much love it. So that's always fun when you kind of go out of your comfort zone a little bit based on circumstances and yeah, I'm just so happy with the way that it is that it finished up. It is a merino blend and I believe that it has silk blended into it because all of the yellow bits are very shiny in person. Um, and I so I think that's silk because I've spun silk before and it's looked shiny like that. So that's my guess. Um, but otherwise it's a merino blend and it's beautiful. So I just did, I just spun this one sort of end to end and I did a a two ply. I didn't do a fractal spin or anything because the way that the fiber was like carded, I thought this would just be a more effective way. And so it's kind of more, even though there's lots of different colors in there, it's sort of a more homogenous mixture of all the colors. So this will make a beautiful, this will make a beautiful accent in something or maybe a really lovely little hat. And it won't have like the color striping effect that like the two ply fractal spins that I've been doing have. This one will be a little bit different. But yeah, that's my quick note on spinning. So that was something I was kind of working on very slowly uh, over the past few weeks. And I'm glad to have finally gotten this one finished so that I can enjoy it. And thank you, Tammy, again, if you happen to see this for this gorgeous braid of fiber. So speaking of fiber, just quickly, the next thing I'm planning on spinning is this one right here. And this was another gift that I received from Lucy, my friend Lucy. This is alpaca from a family that she knows. So this is a very special treasured kind of fiber and gift. Um, so I've been feeling like I really want to honor the gifts that I've been receiving in terms of like fiber and yarn. And I haven't really had a chance to work with yarn that I've been gifted, but I do have the time to kind of spin. So um, I'm happy that I spun the one that Tammy sent me. And now I'm going to spin the one that Lucy sent me. This is like so soft. I, I, I almost don't even want to spin it. I just want to kind of pet it. <laughs> it's really, really soft. It's this beautiful sort of caramel coffee color. It's just gorgeous. Um, I'm very excited to spin this. And I don't think I've spun alpaca yet. So this will be a fun experience. Um, yeah, so that's my next spin. And I have one more finished object. And this one I'll have to insert a photo of. But I thought I would kind of just show you 
some of the colors from it and whatnot. And I, I promise after this, we're going to get to more knitting. Um, but this is a quilt that I finished and I'm so happy with it. It's the first quilt that I've made for myself. So all the other quilts that I've made, which has only been three other quilts, they've all been for my daughter. So I'm excited to have something just for, for me. And I love it. <laughs> So this is called the, I get this wrong every time, it's the Rainbow Jelly Quilt by Moda Fabrics, or it's the Jelly Rainbow. Who's to say? When will I ever remember what it's called? I guess it doesn't matter now because I finished it, but I'll have it linked below. It was a free pattern. Um, I'm pretty sure it was like a quilt along that they did a couple of years ago, and I just happened to cross the pattern um, some months ago, and I ordered my fabric, and I knew one day I would get to make it, and that day finally came. Um, yeah, I'm just so excited that I made this quilt, and I think the colors are beautiful. Um, it doesn't really match, like, my bedding, but that's okay. The orangish stuff does, because the colors it, for my bedding, it's like, I have peachy, kind of clay-colored linen sheets, and then a comforter that's white and, like, mustard yellow, and so this is quite different, but I do have the orange. And, you know, quilts are supposed to be admired and like they're not supposed to just blend in they're supposed to stand out so that's what i'm going with <sighs> this is ruby star society fabric this was a jelly roll um, from the firefly collection so i got to try out each little bit of the fabric and you can see this strip right here that's the same fabric that i went with for my backing because it was my favorite from the whole collection i love the color palette um, and then my binding is the only one that's from a different collection it's the Ruby Star, it's Ruby Star Society, but it's the Rise and Shine collection. It's just beautiful little flowers. And it's also pink and orange, but it's two different shades than the backing. So it still kind of stands out, but it, it still blends in, I think. And um, I just love it. So I'll have put in a photo. I think it looks better kind of more up close like this, but I obviously can't show the whole thing up close. Um, so yeah, I'm very proud of that. And it's quite warm. It's comfortable. It's like, it's like throw sized. So it's like 54 by 54 inches. And the batting inside is an 80 20 blend of cotton to wool. I think that was what I got. It's been a while. Um, yeah, I wanted to see, I haven't washed it yet. So I'm not sure how it's going to sort of get that, you know, quilt patina look once it's washed. But right now I think it's beautiful. Um, I'm sure it'll shrink a little bit and I'm sure I'll get a little bit of that quilted look to it. Um, and then the only other thing is I did machine quilt this whole thing. So the binding, I did the, all the quilting myself and I just did kind of this, um, quilting in the ditch where I like to go right outside of the actual seam on both sides, like a quarter of an inch or an eighth of an inch. Um, it's very bespoke. Like I, it, there's no, there's no science to the way I did it. Um, but it is, it is pretty symmetrical because I did it. The same way for all of the designs so you can actually see the outline of all the jelly rolls on the side but that's my finished quilt so that's all of my finished objects and now i'll talk about my works in progress so the whip that i'll start with is one that i showed last time and this is a tale of woe and a tale of triumph but woe nonetheless so um, last time I recorded an episode, I announced that uh, Claudia Quintanilla from Unit Toronto, uh, she reached out or her team reached out and asked if I would like to participate in a knit along that they are hosting for Claudia's new pattern called Asusena, which is a pullover design that she created for the Chilean Yarn Festival coming up, um, I think in May. And yeah, they're having a knit along. It's current, it's ongoing. Um, they gifted me a copy of the pattern and they had given me like a coupon code to share with everybody. Uh, 
to get the cup the, get the pattern for half off. And they also invited me to create yarn kits with my hand dyed yarn. So I did that. And I do still have a few of those kits left, by the way. But this has been a journey. This pattern is actually very, very easy. There is nothing difficult about it. Um, I would say if you have knit, you know, this would be a great second sweater project. The color work is very simple. There's really nothing, um, there's nothing ambitious about it, which is kind of amazing because the finished sweater is gorgeous. So it's, it's like very simple practice for a beautiful payoff. Um, but <laughs> I have knit mine three times now. Um, not the whole thing, fortunately, but we'll just kind of go into it. So I'm using this project bag, which I use frequently. This is one of my bags that I've sewn. I sold these in my shop a year or two ago. And again, I dyed the yarns for this project. So my contrast color is my rose clay colorway. And this is a merino cashmere nylon yarn with a silk mohair. And so I'm holding these double for the color work portions. That's my contrast. And then my main color is my dried poppies colorway. And again, same combination of yarn bases. But for this kit, I decided to make the mohair a little bit brighter of a red versus the base kind of poppy cranberry color. So this is this, but then I over dyed it with like a brighter red because I wanted the fabric to have a lot of depth to it. And I wanted, I thought it would be a better color combination with the rose clay. So that's kind of the story with these, but this is my dried poppies colorway. Um, so <laughs> I got started with this knit along a little bit early because I wanted to make a little bit of progress to show a sample for the kits that I created with these yarns. And if you watched last time, you'll know that I finished the entire yoke and then I counted my stitches and realized I was like 60 short. And I think it's because I forgot, I, I think I must have overlooked an adjustment round part in the pattern where you increase so many stitches before you move on um, to, the, to the color work. I must have missed that and so I was short. So I ripped it back to the neckline and did the whole chart again. Not only did I do the chart, but I finished the whole body. I did the uh, ribbing at the bottom, I bound off, and then I decided I'm gonna block this and uh, knit the sleeves afterwards. It's something I like to do. I don't really have a rhyme or reason for a pattern like this. You know, sometimes it's nice to block and like have things kind of even out depending on the yarn that you're using before you pick up your stitches and knit your sleeves and um, have an idea of like how much it's going to grow and those kinds of things. So I was kind of thinking along those lines and wanted to block the body before doing the sleeves. So it was like a Saturday morning, a Friday mo Saturday morning before I came to my shop, I decided to soak it and it was a beautiful warm day outside. So I thought I'm going to leave this outside to dry because it'll dry quickly. So I get home from work. First thing I do is run to the backyard and I'm like, oh, it's dry, that's great, but it looks different. Like, is it covered in dirt or what's going on? And that's when it hit me that I bleached my sweater. I have dried things outside before and never had this happen. Um, but I have also never left it outside as long as I did. And, you know, I just went to work and completely forgot about it. I came here to the shop and it just wasn't on my mind. I didn't ask my husband to like check on it. I just asked him to take it inside if it rained. I didn't even think about the fact that it could bleach from the sun. So all that long story short, <laughs> let's wrap it up. This is the beautiful body for that pullover. And I'm sure on the camera, it looks kind of normal. This is the front. And so I had it laid to where the front was out. And I mean, it does. It's, it would, it would work if I did a couple of silly things to make it work, but it's not going to work. <laughs> so there's the back. And in natural light, you can really tell a difference. Like in the sunlight, the front, I mean, there's like a solid line of like delineation here where the, the fabric changes colors. Again, it's probably not going to show up super well in here with the lighting here next to me, but in the natural light, you can see it. It's, it's like solid stripe cranberry and then like a muted brick red on the front. So that was very sad. Um, I came to terms with it pretty quickly, but I, of course I was disappointed. And honestly, this is, I mean, this is not inexpensive yarn. Even if I dyed it, I still had to pay for it and it's not inexpensive. So I'm very disappointed in myself with this. 
I have kind of some plans of what I'm going to do with this, but for right now, I'm just setting it to the side. <laughs> but yeah, you can see it was all finished. Um, it feels like velvet. It's so wonderful. Um, so I wasn't going to let that stop me. And I cast on for a third time. So here is my progress now on version number two. And you can see how much richer the color is. I think that really gives you a better idea of how much it bleached. Um, my husband was like, why don't you lay it outside and put the back side up so that it'll equally, it'll bleach equally. But then I was thinking, okay, I could do that. But then I'd have to knit the sleeves and cover the body. And, you know, like a pancake, I'd have to flip it back and forth to get it bleached in all the right spots just correctly. Um, and it's not something that I could just like over dye because there's this color work in here and in the ribbing. And so anyway, I'm going to probably have to harvest the yarns out of this and re-dye the main skein and then use it for something else. But anyway, it's fine. I've made a lot of progress on version number two and it's so beautiful that it's, it's really worth the effort. Um, and the good thing, I always try to look on the positive side. The good thing is that when I finished it and I tried it on after it was blocked and bleached, I at least wanted to get an idea of how it fit. And I knit the size two, which is often what I knit in a pattern, but it was, it was too big for my liking. Um, like the yoke was a little bit too long and just, I didn't really love the way that it fit. So the advantage of this is I got to cast on in a smaller size and hopefully get a better fit in the overall garment. And so, you know, it's fine. It's, it's worth the effort. And I honestly think this one looks even better. So I should be an expert at knitting this pattern by now. <laughs> um, and the other thing is I did knit the other one, even though I knit it to length, I have a short torso, so it was too long on me. So this one I know to knit a little bit shorter too. Um, but yeah, that's my, my new Asusena. Again, this is a Claudia Quintanilla pattern. I have kits available, or of course, you could just use whatever yarns you love. Um, the pattern's on Ravelry and on her website. And the knit along goes um, like halfway through May, so there's still plenty of time to join. And yeah, I just love it. I love the details of like this little scalloped sort of color work at the neckline. That is actually my favorite part of the whole sweater. And then this is the color work chart, and at the end, I'll probably be sewing in with like some metallic embroidery thread. I'll be sewing in some little beads in the centers of all the motifs. Um, we'll see. That's part of the design. I don't know if I'll do it yet, but if I do, I'll probably do like a rose gold colorway to sort of um, not make it too contrasted with the rose clay in the contrast color. But that's my Asusena attempt three. <laughs> okay, my next work in progress is very exciting because this is a project that's been number one on my queue since it came out. So for several months, this has been like number one, my heart song project. I've just been desiring this one so much, but I had, I've had a lot going on and I had other projects on the needles. So I guess in a way I rewarded myself for finishing the cloud bow pullover by casting this on. Um, and this is in a new project bag that I have from Knitting Nelly. I love her project bags, but I've never attempted to buy one. This is one of those makers who has those shop updates that like, if you're not there right on time, you're going to miss out. And I happened to be able to get one this time. And I'm, I'm very glad it has these sweet little mushrooms on it. And I love the fabric colors. This is the back and it's just beautiful. So I thought it was worthy of holding this new cast on that I just love so much. So the yarns I'm using for this project is um, I picked this up at Rhinebeck at New York Ship and Wool this previous year. Um, and I, I love this wool. It's amazing. So this is called Nash Island Woolen Yarn Tide. And it's 100% wild Maine island wool. And it's it's like a sport weight yarn. And this colorway is called Anemone. And I it's just, it's beautiful. It's like a two-ply, um, there's like a slight halo to it. It's a non-super wash, just gorgeous. Um, and I'm excited to have more of this color in my wardrobe. So what am I knitting? It's the Bifurca Vest by Teti Litzak. And I'm just so happy to finally be making mine. And actually, I'm almost done with it. Um, yeah, I think it looks so beautiful. 
So I think it's a little tricky to show because of the way that like some of it's on needles, some of it's on um, scrap yarn, but I've kind of gotten past the, I think like the really intensive portion of the knitting. So now that I'm to the point where I've started on like a sleeve and I have one of the body sides together, I think the rest of this will be pretty simple. This is definitely more of an intermediate to advanced pattern. It has a very unique construction to anything I've ever knit. Um, and just in general, I think that it's a little bit trickier, not undoable, but I did have to spend like an hour figuring out once I finished this very interesting portion, like, you know, this is where you start, you do, you start at the neckline, but obviously it's this interesting like double V neck. Um, after I got past that part and then did the, this band of color work and then like the shaping and the texture and all of that, once it's time to like kind of create where your sleeves will go, um, I had difficulty understanding what she was saying in the pattern with um, how to isolate your stitches or like what which stitches to move to scrap yarn and um, which stitches to keep together because you end up making multiple groups. And then finally, I think it was like I just needed to do it and then analyze it for myself. And then I was able to kind of visualize what was supposed to be going on. So I kind of changed my interpretation of the instructions and then... I just went with that and it turns out that was correct. So I figured it out. It's probably a me thing, but I think a beginner knitter would probably be very stressed out by the way that <laughs> this is constructed. For me, I love it. I, I love this. I like crave this, but um, when I first started knitting, I don't think I could have done it. So anyway, this is my bifurca vest, my first of two that I plan to make. Um, so the, the contrast, I've used up a good bit of this one. I don't remember the colorway name for it, but it's this beautiful chocolate brown. I love pink and brown together, and I love the stark contrast. I've seen some low contrast versions that I thought were beautiful, but seeing this very stark contrast version, it's like perfect. It's exactly what I was picturing in my mind's eye, and I cannot wait to have this. Um, I actually ordered a dress from an online thrift shop that I think this will look very pretty over in the spring and summertime. So I'm so excited to get this one done and um it's just it's really beautiful um so i still have to go in and like this whole part is still open so i still have to kind of create like the arm and then you graft the sides with a kitchener stitch and that's kind of what i've done over here so i've created the armhole i've just started the ribbing it is going to be a big armhole but when i add in the ribbing it's going to bring it in a little bit and then I've, I've grafted the sides and then I'll have to pick up, I think, all the way around and do like the ribbing, which it's got a long ribbing. Um, but yeah, I, I very much look forward to having this one done. I've got all kinds of cute little stitch markers on there that I guess I can take off now, but they were used to mark increased lines. This is a very adorable pink dinosaur that my friend Marquita sent me. I've got a little mouse from Simply Serving. I have another dinosaur on this side. Um, and this one is from Maria of Woolen Forest. I don't know what she goes by now, but it's a gemstone. So that's my bifurca. Probably my favorite knitting work in progress currently because I've just been I've just been wanting this one. So I'll have that one done and I will be wearing that by the next time I record. So a very quick little update on my patchwork mystery knit along, which is from, it's an Alicia Plummer uh, design and it's a, it's an ongoing mystery knit, mystery knit along. And at this point we're on clue four, but I've only completed clue two. It's not a lot of knitting, so I know I can catch up, but I was not wanting to fall behind just because I have so much going on right now, just with the business and my projects. I, I was thinking if I fall behind, I'm going to like really fall behind. So I'm hoping to catch up, but I'm going to show through clue two, just so you know. But um, it's not much. <laughs> I just have a big square. It's a big garter square. So it's time to pick up along another one of these edges. And I think basically do the same thing in this next color, which I love. Um, so I'm not going to go into great detail because there's really not much to show you here. But this will be, I think, a really nice project. I'm excited to see how this pattern plays out when it's when it's finished 
Um, it's inspired by like patchwork quilt designs, I think. So yeah, I think it's going to be a beautiful finished object when it's done. And I, I've been excited to get to this color. These are all Cascade yarns. This is the Sport Weight. I think it's the non-superwash. So it's nice and wooly. And with that garter stitch, it's like springy and just really nice and lovely. So it's nice to knit on. It's just a lot of garter. And if you know me by now as a knitter, I don't love like stockinette and garter. I love lots of color work and texture. And so it's it should be fast, but it's sort of slow going for me because I don't my I just don't crave working on garter stitch when I have the time to knit. Um, but I need to just go ahead and pick up a side. And then once I've done the pickup portion, the rest of it, you know, it's kind of like you can just pick up and knit as you have time throughout the day. So um, I do need to catch up before the next clue comes out on Tuesday. <laughs> we'll see if I do that. So my next couple of projects are in this gigantic bag that I have from my favorite bag maker, who is Amy Beth of Fat Squirrel Fibers. I've talked about this one a couple times now. I, I got it not too long ago, but it's adorable. It, it matches me as a person, I think. And um, I think it looks, I feel like it goes really well with this Knitting Nelly bag that I have. It's like, this is like a set, like they're long lost friends. <laughs> this is how I personify my objects. Probably not healthy. But yeah, so it's in this bag. I've got a couple of projects in this one. And I won't spend a lot of time on these. I did talk a lot about these in my last episode. If you're curious and want to go back, I did put a little bit of work into this. So this next project is a gift for my best friend, Kira. So Kira, if you're watching this, make sure to turn this off. But um, as I mentioned, she's getting married this year. And so I am surprising her with a wedding shawl. I'm very excited to give this to her. And I think it's going to be very beautiful. There's no expectation from me for her to actually wear it during her wedding, like at all. She gets, you know, she needs to wear what she wants to wear. She has a beautiful dress that she's picked out. But if she wants to take pictures with it, or really my intention was just to give her something very bridal to help her really memorialize like the day. It's such a special day and she's going to have a beautiful wedding. So I wanted her to have her very own special project to match. Um, so this yarn is so lovely. I just wish you could feel all of the yarns in today's episode. Everything is just so nice and soft. Um, this is a Malabrigo yarn. It is the Silk Paca yarn. So it's a silk and alpaca lace weight blend. Um, so it's very, very soft, like so soft. One of the softest things I've ever felt. And um, it's very lightweight with a beautiful drape. So I am pretty solidly into the chart. I think I have finished three of the charts out of six, maybe. Um, or I'm, I'm in, I'm currently working on the third chart out of six. So good progress. I think this isn't, I don't have to have this until, you know, October, November. She's getting married in early November. I want to give it to her before then. So I have quite a few months to get this done. I just wanted to make sure I had a comfortable amount of time to work on this project. Um, and so, yeah, I, and you know, it's one of those knits where like every time I pick it up, it just brings me happiness because it's this beautiful lace chart. Um, I think it's going to be so gorgeous once it's blocked out. This is called the Lace Eater Mashup. And again, I can't remember the name of the designer, but I'll, I'll have already put her name on the screen and a picture hopefully of the finished object. So um, I've got a good bit of the width going here. I don't think it, get, I don't think it gets much wider or longer than this. It's just gonna be longer you know, this, this way, vertically. <laughs> but yeah, so it's very, you can see it's very bridal. Um, something I did not mention last time about this project that I meant to is I bought this yarn online actually several months before she got officially engaged because um, basically we were just talking about the idea of her getting married and I had been wanting, like I, I just told myself for years now that the second I knew she was getting married, I was going to make something like this. So she doesn't know this, but for a long time, I have been trying to find the perfect pattern. So this pattern I actually had sitting in my Ravelry cart for longer than I care to admit. Um, just waiting for like one day, hopefully this will happen. And then it did. And so, um, but several months before it, I just went ahead and ordered the yarn because I don't know, I was just feeling inspired, I guess. And 
I didn't cast on though until she was engaged. I just, I waited, but yeah, I'm just so happy to be working on this. It brings me a lot of joy. I treasure her very much. I don't have many like true, I, have, I feel like I have a lot of friends, but she and I have known each other since high school. And the only other person who I have that like deep friendship with um, passed away a couple of years ago. So I think that made me hold on to our friendship even tighter, I suppose. Even if we don't see each other all the time, she just means the world to me. So anyway, I'm making her a wedding shawl and I hope that she loves it as much as I do. And if, any, if nothing else, maybe she can keep it in a little keepsake box, you know, or on her anniversary, maybe she can wear it then. And so that's my, my wedding shawl for my best friend. And the other project that I have in this bag is my Quiet Sky. This is a crochet blanket pattern. Um, it's Quiet Sky by Anita Gibney. I'm making slow but steady progress on this one. So the last time I had shared this finished quilt block that I made, it's so beautiful. It's like a sawtooth star quilt block. Um, and the whole blanket is going to be made up of these. In So there's six colors, and so there will be different color arrangements. So I'll have all kinds of different um, squares like this to put together. Um, so I finished that one and I've also finished one of these green ones. Um, this one has all the ends woven in. I still need to do like the single crochet border on these. I haven't done that yet, but this one I've woven in some of the ends. I'm still working on that, but I, I love the color palette here. And I accidentally like made a really big hole here in the center of my magic ring but I realized how I did that so fortunately this next one that I started looks a lot neater it's been a long time since I've crocheted so I kind of had to like remind myself of certain techniques but I think this one looks the neatest out of all of them so I'm guessing that the more I do this the better they'll look each time um, so now I just have the finished center for this one this is the same as this one I really am excited to do like all of the colors but I thought you know I have to make so many of each color palette so I decided to go ahead and start on another duplicate just so I don't lose so I don't get discouraged because I just want to move on to the next color I thought I'll just try to make a few of each color before moving on so I have two basically finished ones I'm working on my third um, so that's a lot of the colors that will be in there I will also have this natural these are all Barocco vintage DK by the way so these are like I think it's 55% acrylic to 45% wool, but it's not a squeaky acrylic. So this is a really nice yarn, I think, especially for blankets. I'm very happy with this. So I still have to introduce this color, which is called natural, I think, or mushroom. Mushroom, maybe. Um, this is the green that you saw. This one is called fennel. I love this one. It's kind of heathered. This one is my favorite. It's called chana dal which is one of my favorite foods, <laughs> but I love this golden heathered color. This one I think is Robin's egg, another beautiful color. I put together this palette and I thought it would be really nice. Um, I have the white, just the white. And then my last color is this pink, which again, I forget what this pink is called. But those are my colors. And then I'm using this Frills crochet hook. It's so beautiful. This is a four millimeter. I love it. <laughs> okay, so the only other work in progress that I have to show is my cross stitch. Um, I hope that you're excited by all of the multiple crafts that I'm sharing today. I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm, really, I'm really inspired across the board to just make all the time. And um, mostly that's knitting for me, but it's been nice to kind of branch out into some other crafts again. And, you know, it's, we're coming out of the really cold, like hibernating, must knit all the time months. And so now I, I want like all the knitting, but I also want all of the like spring motifs and the cross stitch and the crochet quilts and just, I want all of it. So I'm spreading out my time a little bit more so than I used to. So last work in progress that I'm going to share today, and it's in this gigantic bag. Um, this is not a bag that I sell. I've gotten that question. This is not in my shop. This is from 65 South, who's here in Alabama. I found them on Etsy. 
but I love this bag and it happens to be the perfect bag for my cross stitch. So this, uh, this chart is called Egg Hunt by Satsuma Street. I should have taken it out of the Q-snap before, but look at this giant Q-snap I have. <laughs> I was uh, stitching this with a small Q-snap and I was so frequently having to change the position um, that when I ordered some materials for my upcoming stitch along, I got this giant Q-snap and I love it. But here is my progress. I'm almost done. You can see it's a lot of fabric. This was my first ever cross stitch. So I wasn't quite sure what I was doing when I ordered the fabric, but I'll have, I'll be able to do smalls on the extra fabric. But here is my cross stitch. It is genuinely almost done and it will be done by the next time I record. The only thing I'm missing are like two, I've got to finish out um, a little bit of design right here. I that's what I was working on. Wait, no, this side <laughs> where there's a thread. I, I need to finish out this little part, part of the design. I know there's a couple of like one and two stitches here and there that are missing a stitch. So I'll have to go back over like kind of with a visual fine tooth comb and see what's missing. But for the most part, it's done. I've got the back stitching in there. Um, like I can see I've got like a red there in the center that's missing over here. Um, so I need to do those little things. And then there's two like large florals. So this is symmetrical. I've got to just do those and then it will be done and I can frame it. And I just love this. Um, this is on Ada fabric. That's all I have stitched so far. I am excited to try out linen, but so far I've just used Ada. And I have this beautiful color called olive. Um, all, the, all of the threads for this are DMC and I, it's just, I can't get over how beautiful this is. Um, so even if you're not a cross stitcher, I think you could probably enjoy this. And like, it's amazing, you know, when I started knitting and I realized, oh, I'm, I'm making these things with my hands, like my hands can do this. And then I kind of, it's like, that's so, I'm so used to that now that I don't have that same, like, I don't know, that same wonder, like, oh, I did this. So cross stitch has opened that back up for me, right? I look at this and I'm like, wow, my hands did this. Um, so I'm very proud of this. I'm very excited about cross stitch. I hope to encourage some of you guys to try it out too. I just think it's, it's wonderful. It really is. And there's so many kinds of designs that you can stitch. So I've been doing lots of research. The last, I think the first time I talked about this, at that point, I knew nothing. I didn't know what I was talking about. I didn't know the lingo. I didn't know the style of designs. I didn't really appreciate certain kind of designs. But now I'm so, I feel like I'm so, <laughs> involved in that world like I feel like I know all the floss tubers now I I know all the I don't know the different designers the different types of charts and fabrics and um I have definitely really jumped into this craft so but this one I think was a beautiful starting piece because I really wanted something with a lot of vibrant color and this is very much that I just oh it's so pretty I'm going to frame this one so hopefully the next time I'm here, it'll be framed. Okay, so that's all the projects that I'm going to show you that I'm like actively working on. I do want to talk a little bit about my botanical study sal that I've got coming up and show you what I have for that. And then I'll just show you a handful of things that I've picked up over the past month or so. So once again, this is the chart, botanical study number one. It's very beautiful. So I am all kitted up and ready for um, our start date. So I got my first cross stitch project bag and it has a vinyl front. I love this fabric. I, I like really had a hard time picking out exactly what bag I wanted until I came across this one. And it was like, it just, it's so beautiful. I love the color palette. I love the birds and like the thistles and all the flowers. So I have, I do have my floss in here. I am actually, I do need to add a couple of my DMC flosses into this bag. Um, I am using the fancy floss that's called for in the chart for I think all but two of the colors. So I have some good DMC equivalents already in my stash to stitch this with. Um, so these are Weeks Dye Works and I just have these really beautiful, you know, hand dyed 
flosses, which for all of my knitters, it's so fun getting into this world because it's, it's like getting to start buying skeins of yarn, but they, they're like $2 instead of almost 30, you know? Um, this one's called Bullfrog, which I love. It's variegated. That'll be my first time stitching with variegated floss. So yeah, there's my flosses, except I have to add my ecru and like a mustard color, I think. And then I have my, my fabric already in the little Q-snap ready to go. So this fabric is, I think it was Picture This Plus, and it's actually Ada. Um, and the color is called Dusk, so you can see it's dark, but it has like a little bit of that sort of modeling to it, but it's all very dark, and um, there, if I hold it like that, I think you can kind of see. So it's not a solid black like this one, which was going to be what I was going to use initially, and this one is, um, this one's linen, so I was looking forward to using the linen, but I really wanted more of this sort of weathered, like modeled look for this particular chart, because I think it matches like the concept of the chart. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to use that. And I have to say, I didn't realize Ada could be so soft. It's so soft. All the Ada that I have either worked with so far or have purchased is like stiff, which I think is nice for stitching, but this is really soft and there's like drape to it. And I just, I can't wait. I've been having to um, be, I've had, you know, I have to be good and not start before the, the start date for the sale. But I'm excited because I will have my other cross stitch finished before I start this, which means I will only have one project on the go. And I love that. Okay, so my goodness, this has gone on and on and I don't want to have to edit a lot. Plus I want to go home and be with my family. I'm going to show you guys just a couple of things that I've picked up recently that I'm excited about. So for one, while we're on cross stitch and then I'll show you some yarn. I have this chart that I cannot wait to get to. It's called Stitchy Shed by Erin Elizabeth Designs. And um, it has pink and it has quilt motifs and a white picket fence. And I just was really, I felt like a calling to this one. And this will be a nice one to stitch up and hang in my shop, I think. So I'm excited to do that chart. And I got it kitted up. So I have my DMC floss here in all of the different colors. There's lots of pretty colors in there. And then I have my fabric, which is 14 count pale coffee Ada fabric. It's really pretty. It's just a, like it says, like a pale coffee, kind of a beige color. So I think that's going to be a beautiful project that I can't wait to get to. Okay, two more things I'll show you. So you can see this panda behind me. Pandas are like my favorite animal. They always have been. And I enjoyed knitting that for my daughter so much. I'm going to make her a lot more dolls. But the first panda knitting pattern I ever came across was actually this panda from Barrett Woolco, who was Susan B. Anderson. And I, I'm pretty familiar with her designs and her kids. So she's got the designs for sale on Ravelry and her website. But they also, they have their own yarn line. And so she designs with that yarn. I have been waiting for like two years for this kit to come back in stock. So when it did, I had to get it. I really didn't want to buy anything at that time, but I really didn't want to miss the opportunity because I've been waiting for, again, like two years for this to come back. So this is an illustration of the really sweet little panda that I'll be knitting. And it has all of the yarn. Um, it had a link, like a code for the pattern. Um, but these are the beautiful yarns. It's this really lovely like woolen spun yarn. Um, this is the same designer and kit maker that I used for the little fawn that I knit a while back for my daughter. Um, but yeah, this will be the panda. And then this will be the panda's coat. And I just need to get some little buttons to go on the coat. Um, but it did come with safety eyes. And yeah, I'm just so thrilled to finally get to make the panda of my dreams. And then I'll have two pandas. They'll be very different. Okay, and then the last thing I'll show you before I leave, I did order some yarn from Long Dog Yarn from her Princess Bride collection. And normally I would have taken this out of the package, but it has this sticker on the front that says inconceivable, which is, I, it's lovely. It was really hard to pick a color way I, that I was going to get from her, but I knew exactly what project I was going to make. 
and I really had a vision for what color I wanted it in. So I stuck with that and that's all I got. Um, and the colorway is called Rest Well and Dream of Large Women, which is a quote from the movie. So I got two skeins of the Merino sock, which is 7525 Superwash Merino Nylon. And I got two skeins of the Silk Mohair. Um, and yeah, all in the same colorway. And these are going to be a pullover, like a slipover vest. Um, it's a it's a pattern that's similar to the Amy slipover, which is a beautiful satin garn um, pattern. And even though I carry satin garn in my shop, I have not been able to order that catalog. It's always out of stock when I try to order from them for the shop. So I did find a pattern that's actually quite similar, but it doesn't have the same sort of neckline or really the finishing details. But basically, it's this beautiful, simple vest that I can throw over a top, like a blouse like this and have my little bow sticking out, but um, it closes on the sides with these very sweet little bows. And so I've been wanting something in this color. I feel like this is a color that suits me that I don't normally work with. So I want to incorporate it a little bit more. I'm, I'm more of like a pink and a brown kind of person, but I have been really called to like these sea, sea blue green colors for a while, like my earrings and yeah. So this is actually going to be my next cast on after I finish a project. So I'm going to finish probably probably my Asusena or maybe my after I finish my Bifurca, I'll cast this one on. Okay, <laughs> I've been talking on and on. Um, thank you for tuning in today. And our spring garden is in full, where, where it's just like coming in beautifully. I hope to capture a little bit of footage to put in to the video here. I This is my third year of doing YouTube, I think. And every spring, whenever you know the garden starts to come in, I try to incorporate footage of that so I can share it with you guys. And we actually have a lot of new additions to the garden this year. So I'm looking forward to sharing that with you all in the next few months. Um, yeah, so hopefully I'll have some kind of extra footage here at the end. And I hope I'll see some of you at the Smoky Mountain Fiber Festival. I'm also in the process of applying for SAF. So hopefully in October, hopefully I'll get to vend at SAF, which is right outside of like Asheville, North Carolina. Um, so we'll see how that goes. I'll let you guys know, of course, if I get to go and vend at SAF. And there's also the Alabama Fiber Festival. That's a new one. That'll be in November. It's actually the day before my best friend's wedding. So I'm a little bit stressed trying to coordinate all of that. Thankfully, my husband is going to help with running the booth so that I can go do you know, the maid of honor things, rehearsal dinner and all of that for her wedding. Um, so yeah, lots of things to look forward to. Um, local yarn store day is April 27th. So we'll have a party at the shop and I'll, I'll try to send out a newsletter since I don't think I'll get to make another video. I'll send out a newsletter with kind of some details about what to expect. I don't even fully know yet. Um, we'll do a sale like we do every year. I'll probably bake a cake and we'll do some giveaways. I'll have some local yarn store day, like exclusive items from Koi Goo in the shop and um, yeah, all that good stuff. So, okay. Thanks for joining me today. I hope that you have a lovely weekend or week whenever I get this up and I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.